So um, let's talk about uh, quickly the characteristics or features for solid-state phase transformation. First one is for solid-state phase transformation that involve only solid phase. Typically, uh, one may encounter larger barrier. When we say larger, it it is in comparison to liquid phase transformation or gas phase transformation. The larger barrier typically comes from several aspects. One is the volume uh, strain energy, which is due to the difference in the initial state and the final state in the molar volume. Quite often, there's certain difference in the molar volume, and to overcome the volume change and the resulting um, string energy it uh, needs a kinetic activation and uh, this is one part of the barrier where the resistance would come from the other one is called uh, interfacial energy because between the different solid state uh, there is quite often a distinct interface and uh, to create the interface to realize the phase transformation from the initial state to final state, the interface creation process needs energy. And the interfacial energy, as we mentioned before, it may come from different terms, such as chemical term. The, at the interface, the atoms may be bonded to the wrong types of atom, which needs energy. And also the geometric term. The, it, the new phase and the original phase may not match very well at the interface and the geometry and the resulting string energy will need to be overcome and this also constitute part of the barriers in the process okay and for solid state phase transformation another characteristics is about the uh, diffusion process or slow migration or sl low mobility of the atoms in the process. This is because atoms quite often are packed pretty dense in the solid state and the temperature is also lower. Therefore, in order for the atoms to move from one location to another location, it has to overcome the greater barrier. Okay. One example is about the self-diffusion coefficient in solid. The self-diffusion coefficient, which means even without concentration gradient, for random work, the atom over time will wander away from its original location. But the diffusion coefficient in solid, even without uh, concentration gradient, is only one in a million of that in liquid or 10 to the minus 6 of that in liquid which means the diffusion in solid is much much slower than in liquid okay and because for solid state reaction most cases the phase transformation occurs through heterogeneous nu nucleation, which means the phase transformation process occur at specific locations that helps to lower the interfacial energy or reduce the string energy. And this is due to the fact that all types of defects exist uh, within the solid and they act as potential heterogeneous nucleation sites. For example, we talk about vacancies that they can be and the vacancies are throughout the crystalline solid there's also dislocation a linear defect where the phase transformation would happen or green boundaries that is quite often the location for many phase trans solid state phase trans transformation to initiate because it's packed atoms are packed looser over there which can accommodate the string energy and the individual energy and stacking forward can also be the location for uh, phase transformation. Secondary phases which introduce extra interface will also be a popular location for solid state phase transformation to initiate. Okay. And finally, of course, the material surface can also be a uh, preferred location for heterogeneous uh, phase transformation or nucleation site. Okay. And uh, in addition to the features that we mentioned, the slow diffusion, uh, 
the heterogeneous nucleation and large barrier. Uh, one other feature is that uh, metastable phase may occur. When we say metastable state, these are the phase or state of material that is at a energy level that is higher than the ground state or the lowest energy state. So here is a schematic which show a material has two states, state one and state two, uh, in terms of the Gibbs free energy. And what you see is that the state two is actually at a lower energy level compared with state one. But in between them, there is a large barrier or large activation energy for the system to move from state one to state two. Because of this um, large barrier, even though from state 1 to state 2 is energetically favorable, which means from state 1 to state 2, the system actually gives free energy decreases, the process sometimes do not readily happen because of the existence of large barriers. For example, as you will see here, from state 1 to state 2, even though the free energy jobs, it has to overcome a steep uh, energy barrier or activation energy in order for the transformation to occur from state 1 to state 2. And as a result, the probability of that is low from 1 to 2, and quite often the material um, would stay in the metastable state of state 1 instead of moving all the way to the most stable state of state two, okay? The one example would be the diamond versus graphite. We all know both diamond and graphite are pure uh, carbon in terms of element composition. But on the other hand, uh, people know that graphite is the most thermodynamically stable phase at ambient condition at room temperature. However, even though diamond is, has an energy state that is somewhat higher than graphite, at room temperature, diamond crystal do not readily transform into the lower energy graphite. Diamond do not tra transform to graphite at ambient condition. Because why? Because of this huge activation energy, because of slower diffusion, okay? And another example is about the uh, annotate TiO2 versus the rutile TiO2. Both these two types of TiO2 or titanium dioxide have the same um, metal of titanium and the same um, non-metal atoms of oxygen, and the ratio is 1 to 2 between titanium and oxygen. However, the annotate phase uh, has a different uh, crystal structure from the root tile TiO2 phase, and actually the annotate phase would be of higher energy state compared with TiO2 state, especially at comparable low temperatures. Okay, but because of the large barriers between those two states, the produced annotate quite often stays as annotate unless you heat them up uh, to to achieve the phase transformation completely. Okay, and another feature is that the new phase that are formed often have specific shape or we call morphology or appearance. Okay, and for those that are interfacial energy controlled, which means the new phase and the old solid phase has a large interfacial energy. So then the process, the transformation from initial state to final state quite often, they try to match the lowest energy um, interface, lowest energy interface between the two phases. If they can find one, quite often the shape of the crystal is determined by how well it match between the initial state and the final state, and how big a barrier there exists between those two. Okay, and uh, for system string energy, or the system gives string energy, um, as we mentioned before, quite often they form um, precipitate in order to reduce the volume uh, free energy uh, term in order to lower the system free energy. Okay, and uh, the final feature about uh, solid state phase transformation is that 
but uh, quite often it involves many different interface structures. For example, between um, solid, uh, coherent uh, matrix phase and uh, the and uh, the precipitate phase. Semi-coherent means I write at the interface between the matrix and the new phase. There are certain regions that they match reasonably well, but there are certain regions which we uh, which if you recall are dislocation and they do not match very well. And actually it's the existence of this dislocation uh, release the actual energy uh, from the Uh, from the between the matrix and the precipitate and makes the system s stable. And finally, there's also the incoherent uh, uh, interface between the host or the matrix and the new phase. And uh, they, it means that uh, the new phase and uh, the matrices do not try to match geometrically at all, and as a result, those type of interface, as we mentioned before, are so-called incoherent interfaces. Okay.